So, you want to know what having C6 on is like, do you? Well, it's in the thumbnail. It's boring. Uh, this video, I'm going to go over basically my regret for getting C6 on. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate the things she is useful with. Uh, oh, and I suppose, you know, proof that I have C6 on right there. I also have R2 Aqua because I at least have the sanity to stop at some point. Um, <laughs> so that was good, I guess. Alrighty, so we're going to demonstrate some of the things that are good about C6 Yalan and Yalan's constellations in general. Uh, this is just going to be some commentary essentially on how pointless I think it is to C6 a character. And I'm not talking about this with Yalan in particular because she's, a, from what I understand, she's one of the most popular, if not the most popular character to C6 apparently. Um, and I think it's pointless. Um, I, like, I don't, I don't get it why people enjoy it particularly because like on a traditional build i find it really boring for yalan but there are things i think are valuable about having a c6 but in general it's just an utter waste of money go figure right wow who knew <laughs> oh and here's my yalan's emblem build which is a build i normally do not use on yalan i normally use gilded dreams but if you want to see more of that you're gonna have to watch the video i'm posting tomorrow it will be linked at the end of this video hopefully if I remember. Uh, she is using an HP timepiece, hence why she has over 40k HP on 4-piece emblem. It's not exactly easy to do, but it's, uh, it's a fun thing to do with Yalan. You can do it without having C6 Yalan, to be clear. We're using an HP circlet, because it'll give big numbers, just slightly less consistency. Oh, pay no heed to this team in particular, because Dia's in this team. This is basically an exploration team. So, you know, Yalan runs around in the overworld, which is nice. And then Dia is actually really good for swimming in Fontaine because she has a passive that auto heals her. So, and she runs faster in the daytime. You know, Dia MVP. But anyways, look, it's some Tilly Churl Towers. These should be really great to destroy with C6 Yalan. Wow, look at that. Look how fast I did that daily. What a world. That, that's, I... I know I'm sounding like a sarcastic butthole there, but genuinely that's one of the most useful things about C6 Yalan. It's not what I usually use her for, to be clear, because you know what suffices just as well for destroying Hilly Churl Towers? Well, you know, like Kazaha and Bennett together instantly destroy Hilly Churl Towers too, to be clear. But she does do dailies fast, and in general she does farming fast, so... I, I will demonstrate the farming fast in the in the new domain in particular. So like multi-wave situations, like in domains. C6 Elon is actually kind of nice to have. It's a nice time save. She can cut maybe 10 seconds off of a domain, uh, a domain run, which is, it doesn't seem like that much, but when you factor in the fact that it, you might be farming a domain 20,000 times, um, it, it can add up. <laughs> so it does feel nice. The, the, the time when it's been the nicest and I will show the two domains I felt it was the, the best in, but, you know. And look, you can use it to kill things really fast. Wow. Things do die fast. What a world. Like, the, the, kind of the point I'm trying to make here is the value... Where am I going? Oh, that was the daily. <laughs> I, I just thought those were crabs to kill. Um, so, the point is, like, look, you can, you can kill things really fast. And... That's cool, but you don't really need C6 to do that. Um, I, you really don't. <laughs> uh, her bow it honestly helps her more for killing things real fast by giving her, you know, an absolute whack ton of crit damage. Go figure. That, and then also just giving bonus damage like when she's nearby things. Um, killing enemies fast with Yolan's skill is far more satisfying uh, than just using her burst for overworld, in my opinion. No but... That's for that's for a video for the, that's not this video. This video is about C6 Yalan in particular. C6 Yalan is not meaningfully better for underwater commissions in Fontaine, to say the least. But she's technically no worse than anyone else. But she certainly doesn't give you value, unless you get a Dia along the way to C6 Yalan. Then C6 Yalan can give you value for the underwater exploration. <laughs> All right, well, I showed you C6 Yulon being useful for very minor things in Overworld, but realistically, 90% of competent teams in this game are good for Overworld, so that's not really that much of a selling point. What is a real selling point for C6 Yulon is certain domains can be a little bit easier to just mindlessly farm with Yulon, right? 
and she has, you know, she inherently with her skill will speed up your, your process a little bit by just making it there'd be less of a stupid, you know, runway to go down. And then, of course, her C6 ability can just kill things fast. So I'm just going to use use Kazuha and Yulan here, and we'll see how fast we clear. Um, normally, I would use with other characters because, you know, getting some vapes is good. Go figure. But look at that. He's already dead. And there we go. We're cleared. Not the fastest clear, but I also waffled around for like 10 seconds. Uh, so that was like, what, probably a 35 second clear, I think, in, in this domain, which is not bad. But at the same time, that's not that different from the clears I was getting in, in other teams that I've been using this domain. So like, is it realistically that much better? Do you need C60 law to be able to clear this domain or any other domain fast? D definitely not. I don't know why I waffled so long on that, that artifact. But C60 Long can make it more mindless. You just kind of spam normal attacks. So, like, I I guess if that's your thing, maybe C60 Long is the character for you. <laughs> but, like, the overall point I'm trying to make here is that you get more value out of... I, I think most people will get more value out of having more characters than spending... Potentially, you know, a thousand wishes. It should no, not normally not a thousand. It's usually like six hundred wishes on average to get a C six. Like all this does is give her a bunch of front loaded or back loaded AOE damage. It's a very strong C six, but fundamentally, it just makes Yalan do more damage. Uh, and you can do more like hyper carry Yalan teams in 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 a C six Yalan team just for the sake of buffing Elon's damage and kind of making her your main carry and I guess that's what people might like about it um which is cool I guess but now can I can I not get interrupted good lord um and look things are dead that's what I was I was trying to swirl so that I could clear that faster I don't know I don't know it if it sounds like I'm not that enthused about C60 lot it's because I'm not this could be a cope circlet and I will take that game, thanks. I'm sure that artifact will not roll well, though. Oh, just in case you care, here is how that artifact that I just got from the domain rolled. With that artifact, I now have enough to do a very strong Linea build, so may... No, I don't want Linea, and I have a guarantee that I'm saving for other characters. Alright, we're gonna see how fast I can properly get this domain cleared. not as fast as I could have done. Definitely could have done that faster. I'm pretty sure I could get towards 30 seconds in this, but like, I, look. Those are fast clears in this domain. This domain is a little bit annoyingly slow with, with its, you know, multi-wave setup. Any multi-wave domain is somewhere where C6 Yulon and her ability to like save her C6 ability by using her off-field versus on-field and backload her damage a little bit for particular waves. I could probably optimize clearing that, and C6 Elon is probably the main character that could help me clear that domain with, with like consistent, thirty second time clears, right? For for a domain that probably is taking a lot of people a while to clear because of the multi waves and relatively tanky enemies. But realistically, most domains in Genshin Impact just like they just really don't require something like this. You can craft teams for any particular domain that can very fast. Fastly clear domains that don't require a C6 character to clear them fastly. It's just like this is the primary biggest upside that I've noticed having C6 as Yulon, C6 Yulon's abilities, right? That's why I'm kind of mentioning this. Um, I'll get into why I don't think Yulon, C6 Yulon is that valuable for an abyss, at least for a player like me. First, though, I want to show C60 Lawn in this good old domain, everyone's favorite domain, the Crimson Domain, which is an annoying domain, uh, which has these, like, multi-tiered enemies that spawn, and pyro slimes, and multiple wizards to spawn, and blah, blah, blah. You get the point. Um, if you make sure to try to kill enemies at the same time, which can kind of take, you know... There you go. Look at that. Cleared. 
Um, that was 38 second clear. I've been able to clear this domain much faster with C6 Yulon. It usually requires making sure both of the Pyro Slimes die in Yulon's skill in the first hit, which means having 70% crit rate is not ideal for trying to fast clear this domain. But you get the point. It's a very easy way to clear the Crimson Domain. When I was when I was farming Crimson, that's where C6 Elon had the most value to me. <laughs> it's the only time in this game where I was like, I you know I think I kind of appreciate having C6 Elon here. Other than that, I've never really cared about it. And I honestly wish I could turn it off. Uh, I don't even know if I mentioned that in this video yet. I wish I could turn C6 Elon off. Um, I get some, C1 is nice for at bare minimum overworld, but also is really nice for just reducing Yelon's energy recharge needs, which means you can spec a lot more into damage uh, in many of her team configurations, uh, or teams that could be, she could be part of at least. And then C2 Yelon brings her, increases her damage more, of course, what you do, but then more notably increases her Hydra application to be on par with Xing Chou, which is relevant because oftentimes you might have reasons to use Xing Chou over Yelon just for the extra Hydra application but c2 makes that not really a factor c3 and c5 are whatever c5 is better than c3 in my opinion because her scale damage is more fun not better on a math level to be clear her burst does more damage like over time than her skill but i find her buffing her skill more fun and then c4 is actually in my opinion probably yulon's best constellation because it actually unlocks her utilities and hp buffer uh, which is something nothing else in the game can do right now. C4 Elon is the only way to buff teams HP, and there's plenty of characters like Dia, uh, Hu Tao, Nilu, who all have damage that scales on HP in some form, right? And what the F is this dude doing here? This is new in 4.0. Well, suddenly we're distracted. I'm sorry. Why is this boy here? I am like 99% sure these guys were not here before 4.0. Does anyone else notice that? Oh, I didn't mean to attack them. Apparently they weren't going to attack me until I attacked them. C6 Elon is not very good at killing Hydro immune enemies, to say the least. But it's fine, because the Dia you'll get when you lose inevitably 10 50 50s for C6 Elon is, uh, is more than capable of taking care of Hydro enemies. In my opinion, a C0 Dia is more fun than a C6 Elon, just saying. Alright, well, sorry poor Hydro Eidolons, I, um, I murdered you in cold blood. They were staring out at the ocean, I suppose. I imagine there's some weird lore reason for that, but interesting. Anyways, distracted. Alright, so it's time for the Abyss. The Abyss is the main reason why I personally think C6 Elon is super boring, because when you use C6 Elon in a normal team, she just makes things too easy for most abysses it, it, it is really all it comes down to and the normal thing here right is, is abyss is split right you have chamber you have three chambers and you have first half and second half right abyss is the only hard content in the game and it's structured entirely around right remaining time to three star it has to be more than 420 seconds which means you have to clear in three minutes two chambers with an average of a minute and a half for each team right so once you get to a point where you can competently have enough characters and have the flexibility to deal with different situations, like the fact that you need a, a Hydro character to deal with the, the, the Abyss Lecturer here, right? And whatever other situations the Abyss throws at you, once you have the ability to configure teams to deal with different situations in Abyss competently, you can three-star every single chamber the Abyss throws at you with consistency. And you don't need constellations to do that. So... Once you get that point of being able to clear the abyss, the specific configuration of what does more damage, what is more optimal, doesn't matter as long as you're reaching the clear times. And I, I guess, uh, like to be clear, some people like speedrunning abyss to try to see how how fast is it possible, is it even possible to clear chambers? And like, but there's no actual in-game reason to do that, right? If that's what you would find fun and enjoyable, then maybe you get value out of C6 Elon. Um, what I find fun and enjoyable is using teams and using characters in unconventional ways. So I just have never gotten any meaningful value to C6 Elon. And because of the fact that she can actually make it too easy, like like using C6 Elon, for example, to clear the Abyss Lector in the first half of this Abyss, which I may as well demonstrate here. Normal and charge attack damage bonus. Hey, that's perfect for C6 Elon. So 
to illustrate my point. Essentially, the the problem. Oh, of course, she doesn't start. I, I hate that. I hate that in Abyss, uh, Yolan does not start with her 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 stuff up. So you know, swirl, blam, do this. You know, do this, blam, do that. And I'm purposely using Elon off field right now so that I can backload some of her damage. And oh, there's still one alive because oh well. And blam, we can use her burst again. What a world. Swirl, what a world. Wow, so exciting. And. Now, I'm not used to not having a fourth character. I keep on pushing, pressing forward to switch to a character. So this is very terrible play. I want to be very clear, but I'm not used to actually like playing with this team because I don't play with this team because I don't fight a bun. And he, I swear to God, he just got converted over and he's already and he's already down. Um, there you go. Like I, I this was a very bad play. <laughs> I would say, um, die please. That was a very bad play. I would say. And got through that dude's shield very quickly, right? Um, it's a bunch of front loaded or back loaded. It, let, it does allow the player control. It's like on paper an interesting and very strong constellation. But like the point there is I played badly and I still cleared that chamber in like a minute, right? Which means I could have a very poor performing team relative to what you normally would need to have in the second chamber and still clear with three stars without a problem right i can tell you this team here is not a poor performing team um and so it's just like not fun <laughs> like making the abyss too easy the, the abyss the only hard content in the game making the abyss too easy is not fun that's basically my point um and if you like speed running, you know, if you like trying to solo abysses, just using as strong of a character as you possibly could, then again, maybe you'd get value out of C6 Yulon. But so much value that it's worth the cost to get, it's like, versus being able to have fun messing with other characters that you might like. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't get it. It's just cause like, there's no content in the game that gives any real reason to have it, right? is is my point other than like making crimson witch more convenient to farm <laughs> like, that's kind of it so i don't know like i feel like me making this video is going to risk people being like about the c6 feel on really strong and like yeah i'm not disagreeing with you but like what's the point of it being strong when there's no content in the game that necessitates it right that that's the overall point um, so, I don't know. Maybe I'm just, a, I'm just a terrible Debbie Downer. Uh, but you can see here, I played this, I played this side of the chamber very poorly because I was just talking and not paying attention the whole time. And we still had like 15 seconds to spare, right? And I used Bennett, Kaza, and Yolan together. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, this isn't good. If the rain washes away, it's too strong, essentially, is what I'm saying. And what ends up happening is that because of that, I end up purposely not using Yolan on field, and I have to consider when I'm playing Abyss, if I don't want things to accidentally be too easy, I have to actually like consider, okay, if I use Yolan's burst, I need to make sure I try to not do normal attacks when I have Yolan on field, otherwise I'm going to get the stupid AoE move that's going to rip through things too fast half the time. Um, it just feels too strong to the point that it just like invalidates effort put into other teams that I might want to use in the Abyss. And what I find fun in this game is trying to play around and optimize using non-optimal teams. Uh, the video I posted last week was using a Dia team, which was this same Dia team, but with Candace instead of Elon. Candace is not as strong as C6 Elon, go figure. But making Candace and Dia work together was really fun. And like, yes, that used Bennett and Kazuha, but in my opinion, you get the most fun value out of using the overpowered support characters by trying to buff the more underpowered characters, not by trying to buff the Yolans, unless you use Yolan in an unconventional way, right? So, I don't know. I digress at the, this point. 
the overall point of this video is I really don't get the point, and I, I wish I had not gotten C6 Elon. The only reason I did in the first place is because when I, my, my channel first started taking off, I made a stupid... I stated something really stupid in a video where I was like, I will get C6 Elon, and if I get 5,000 subscribers before her banner ends. And so when I had 5k subscribers, I was just like, well, I guess I'm doing it because I'm stupid and I was, I'm a man of my word. I'm stubborn. Even though my friends told me like when I, I ranted to my friends the night before, I was like, I don't really want to do this. And they were just like, you don't have to. And I know I didn't have to. Like my viewers would have understood that I just made a stupid thing. But like, I, I felt like I said I would to people. So I did it. And then nobody watched the video <laughs> of me summoning for her uh, because nobody watches summoning videos three weeks after the banner is live. Anyways. I don't know. Um, I digress. Point is, C6 Elon, I wish I could turn it off. But C4 Elon can buff her skill, and C C5 Elon also buffs her skill, and C1 Elon gives her skill. I actually like those three those three constellations. C5 is meh, but C4 is actually fun because of her HP buffing potential. It, it genuinely, genuinely opens up like relevant relevance for her in other teams, and just for her HP buffing. And yeah, that's cool. But is it worth getting C, you know, going all the way? I, I don't know. It's most people I feel like C4 is just a minor benefit to getting C6. Um, I think it's her most interesting constellation because it actually changes how you might use the character quite meaningfully. Anyways, the fun thing I want, I, I like about C6 Elon, I guess, is that it enables me doing a more creative build and Elon still being strong. But at, all, at the same time, it means it's hard for me to evaluate how good that creative build even is because I don't know. How much of a difference the constellations are really making well i do and it actually is not that hard you can just like subtract a percentage of damage that you know each constellation gives you uh and if you purposely don't use c6 elon you know then obviously c6 is not a factor it's just annoying to have to not use c6 in, on purpose i don't know anyways if you're interested in seeing a elon then instead of being based around you know just doing four piece emblem boring whatever elon things instead how about a elon that uses Gilded Dreams, or the new skill damage set, or another set called Vorakasha's Dia's Artifacts, I know. I actually have a build and a team with Yolan that makes use of Vorakasha's really well on Yolan's kit and makes her, it's it's honestly probably one of my strongest teams using Yolan on not Emblem of Severed Fate instead of skill damage focused artifact set. It's a super fun team, and if you play it right, Yolan can get consistent, you know, 400k 500k plus uh on on her skill which is super fun <laughs> it's really really fun oh one important note i should have said that the very you know i i'm not trying to say like oh you're really dumb for getting c6 or something if you want to spend your money and for something that makes you happy go for it i just don't i just don't myself from my perspective having c6 on i don't get why people want c6s in general that much for for characters like Yulon because it just like makes things boring. That's that's all it really comes down to. Um, it's my perspective. You can spend your money however you want. Just like try not to get baited when you don't actually need it. Like there's literally no actual functional reason to need it. So the only reason to get C6 Yulon is just because you want it and you're willing to dump the money into it because you like Yulon that much, which is fine. It's your money. Do whatever the frick you want. Just know that there's no actual functional reason in this game that gives any real reason at all to have C6 Elon.